All right, hello, fellow coder. Welcome to this next lesson in our Fresh Vote series. Uh, I believe in this lesson we were going to tackle uh, the look and feel of the comments section, uh, specifically for all of our nested comments here. So, uh, yeah, let's think about how we can make this look a little bit prettier. So one thing that we saw was each comment sort of had the name of the person. Um, when I was looking at like other blogs, as an example, it would say the name of the person who left the comment, and then it would say the uh, date uh, that the comment was left, and then it would have the actual comment itself, and then we might have like a little profile picture or something. So that's, you know, simple, straightforward. I think that's something that we want, I would want to implement. Um, one thing I'm wondering though, for the comment, comments have users, okay, so we can get the user information from a comment, and the user, oh good, the user does have a name, fantastic, and if I say select star from users, do I have a name for, okay, good, 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 that's what I was hoping, is that we would be able to pull in a name, um, and I was hoping I wouldn't have to go and, and create that in the data model, uh, but we already have done that, so that's good. So in the feature screen, um, basically this is, you know, the comments uh, in question are being displayed right here, uh, which is a fragment, right? So it's in our, in our fragments folder. Uh, the comment.html file is where the comments exists. So inside of our fragment, we have the actual div that represents each of the comments that were being displayed in this bunch of comments, right? So each div uh, here, each comment that we cycle through represents each one of those comments. So within this div is where the magic will happen. Uh, we have uh, here where we uh, output the actual text of the comment. So basically what we want to do is we want to have above the text of the comment, we want to have the person's name. So I'm going to do something here. I'm going to do a th text, no, th inline. Uh, text, I think it is. And the reason why uh, I'm doing this, I don't know if I've, I've talked about teach inline before, but it allows you to, to put the, uh, the actual code itself uh, in line. It allows you to put it in here um, instead of in the teach text area. So for example, we could say, you know, name, and then we can do this syntax where we do the double square brackets and then put our um, spring expression language inside of it and say comment dot user dot name. Because I think the comment has a user field, yes. And the user field or user object has a name. So comment.user.name is how we get access to the user's name. And then we can say, um, you know, their name, and then maybe put a hyphen, and then put the date. So comment dot, what is it, created date? I forget what the name of the property is. Yeah, created date. So you see how we can do that in line, right? We can we can write this out like this, as opposed to doing it up here in, in like a th text. So if we did it in th text, we'd have to do a bunch of string concatenation and that kind of thing. Um, so this is just a this it's a slightly nicer way to write it out is all. Um, it's not you know nothing groundbreaking. It just allows us to write it out in a more natural way, except for this ridiculous um, syntax. But hey, what what are you gonna do about that? Them's the that's the way the cookie crumbles. So okay, cool. Then we have our our span where we have our actual um, text of the comment. So that that's pretty good, right? That should maybe if this works um, show us some yeah. So it gives us somewhat of a uh, of a more detailed um, picture. Now, obviously, this is still a little ugly, so perhaps we should surround each comment in some sort of a little border or maybe give some sort of break between two comments. So maybe before we go to the next comment, um, uh, would you put the horizontal rule here, perhaps? Let's put a horizontal rule there and see what that does. There we go. So that breaks it up a little bit. And then uh, maybe we don't put name, but maybe instead um, we make this guy bold. Right? Maybe we make this strong to sort of call out the name. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this is how you do that or not. Let's see if that works. Good. Right? And then the date itself should probably be formatted because that's not how humans typically look at dates. Well, I shouldn't say humans. Programmers look at these and, and they understand them, but that's not how a typical non-programmer would look at it. 
Uh, so we would need to format the date. And I wonder if, I think Timeleaf has a, a mechanism to do that. Timeleaf um, format date. Formatting date in Timeleaf. Dates, so there's a dates helper uh, utility, dates.format. Okay, so we can say, uh, la, 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 la. how would we do this? This is inside a Spring Expression language. So we do dates.format, and then this is the date that we want to format, and then we want to put the uh, actual uh, way that we want to sh uh, show the date. So maybe we would do something like month, day, year. Um, do we care about hour, minute, second? I don't know. August 29th. Maybe we do care about hour, minute, second. Well, at least hour, minute. So, uh, hour, minute, and then AM or PM, I think is how, is how it works. Yeah. That's just a slightly better way. You, you, know, you truncate the, the seconds off of it. Um, and this is where, you know, you can use for the, the formatting of dates. Um, I think uh, Timeleaf supplies a regional formatting. So, like you could take the region that the person is in and format the date like that person is used to, to seeing the dates. Some people, you know, some regions don't use the 12 hour clock, right? Some regions use a 24 hour clock. Um, some regions don't display their dates like this, right? So there's different ways to do it. And I think uh, the dates, for, uh, dates format utility probably has some sort of way to, to format the dates um, in that respect. Uh, I won't get into that right now because that's a bit overkill. But just so you know, and if not, if, if uh, Timeleaf doesn't have that, I'm, I'm pretty sure Java has a way to format it based on a, a local region. Um, yeah. So, okay. The only other thing I would uh, be nitpicky about is how to display... Hmm. Because, like, if we scroll down here and we look at, like, this comment, for example... This comment, how do I know, how do I know what this is in response to, right? We don't, you know, just by looking at it, it's off the screen now. We don't know what this comment is in response to. So that's not the greatest, um, it's not the greatest uh, UI experience because we'd have to like hold our mouse here and then scroll up and then we'd say, oh, I think that's a root level comment. You know, I think this guy and this guy are root level comments, so they're not actually replying to anything. So that's kind of hard to see. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure if there's an easy way to solve that problem right out of the gate here. So I don't want to get too in depth in that solution. But just looking at this stuff as is, it looks a lot better, right? It looks a lot. Um, the formatting is just much better uh, in terms of um, how you would normally see comments left on a blog or, or something like that. So cool. I'm happy with that, uh, albeit th there is, you know, some sort of need to visually display, you know, what the comments belong to in terms of who they're replying to. But hey, that's that's good enough for now. So the next step is to uh, put in some sort of functionality with respect to being able uh, to reply to an existing comment, right? So something like having a div and a reply uh, link, you know, within them. Right, so for each one, if you want to, you can reply to it, uh, and then you know maybe have that be offset a little bit. Um, hmm. Anyway, I guess what we'll do is we'll look into turning this into something that's uh, functional uh, in the next lesson. I don't want to get too deep into um, th this reply functionality. So the first step was to get it visually uh, looking good. Um, and then this, you know, we can turn this into just a blank anchor tag. So that'll help. That'll just turn it into a blue link. So that you can kind of see what it might look like, right? And then, anyway, we can we can play around with this. I mean, it's okay, hold on. I get so, uh, I get so into it. You know, we could just add a margin left to it. Arbitrarily have like a 5M, 10M margin left. Just sort of play around with it. 11M, you know, 12. Because probably these guys are going to be more or less the same. Like that sort of works all over. And if you uh, shrink the screen, 
you know, that still looks good. That reply is still in the right place. So the reason why I'm, I'm talking about this now is I'm sort of uh, thinking about mo the mobile experience. What is the mobile experience going to be like? Um, and that, that looks good to me, right? And uh, yeah, so having the reply button there, we could also have like a little like next to it as well, right? We can have a, uh, uh, another anchor tag here for like, for a like. You know, like, reply, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe even the like is not, um, you know, not as uh, heavily spaced. Um, so maybe we take this margin left. Can we put margin left on an anchor tag? I'm not sure. Yes, we can apparently. Okay, so I'm putting in the anchor tag. So maybe this one's margin left is like 10 M's. And then uh, this guy has a style mar oh, equals margin left of like two M's, that kind of thing. So that way they're, yeah, they're spaced out a bit more. Um, and then maybe even the 10 M's could be reduced to nine because I want to pull it a little bit more to the left. Maybe just a little bit more, maybe try eight M's instead of nine. There we go, maybe eight and a half just to get it to line up with the, the time, you know, that kind of thing. So you can add a like or a reply, that kind of thing. So anyway, we don't have the functionality in place to do likes yet. Uh, we have upvotes for features, but we don't have technically upvotes for uh, comments. So anyway, you can see sort of how that's starting to take shape um, in, in terms of our comments system. So that's cool. So the next lesson, we will dive into the reply, because right now if we click reply, it just refreshes the same page. It's not going to do anything. It just loads the page that we're on. So we'll have to add some functionality there to reply. Um, and uh, we're going to have to think about what that's going to look like. And we're going to have to obviously implement the logic around uh, the reply. Thankfully, you know, we have all the mechanisms in place to, to insert a comment into the system and have it appear in the right place and, and have it, you know, be able to actually populate correctly as a child reply of a parent comment. Thankfully, that's in place. But the uh, mechanisms around the UI for replying and the mechanisms around the um the the populating of the data such that we can save it still needs to be done so that's what we'll tackle in the next lesson looking forward to seeing you there as always take care of yourself happy learning and bye for now